Good morning, everyone. Something about the name of Jesus. I'd like to welcome everybody on Facebook Live and Trinity Baptist Prayer Line. We just greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm excited today because I have my whole family here with me today as we worship the to Lord together. Um, so I'm going to call my son to come on up, and he's going to open us up in prayer, followed by my son, Joshua. Greetings and morning to everyone. Let's bow our head for prayer. Our Father God, we're turning to heaven. We thank you for this beautiful morning. Uh, we thank you for the nice wake up we had this morning with the earthquake, and we pray that everybody was safe during that. But, you know, it really spoke to us all to say, hey, it's time to get up. And it's time to go to church. It's time to learn about the infinite wisdom and grace that the Lord Jesus Christ has provided us. We pray for safety as we all go through the week with everything that's going on in the world. We pray that everyone is doing everything that they possibly can to stay safe and make sure that their loved ones are knowing the love of God. Right now is the time that we all need to spread the word and get everyone involved so that they understand that the end is coming and the time now to come to Christ is this point. I pray that you use um, Antoine through this ministry. Pray that you use him through this sermon so that he can speak through you all. And pray that you guys receive the message that is being provided today. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's reading is coming from Psalms chapter 111, verses 9 and 10. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverent is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all them that do his commandments. His praise endure forever. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Jawan. Talking about Antoine. Who is Antoine? <laughs> wow, I tell you, I need to get on him on that. Calling me Antoine. That's not right. <laughs> Well, I greet you once again in the, my, in, the, in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd like to let, say a little prayer before I get started. Father, it's once again that we come and we thank you for this time of worship. We ask right now that I decrease and you increase. I pray they not see the messenger, but they see the message. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm going to get started today. I'm just going to warn you right now that I do have a lot of scriptures. A lot of people get on me and say, hey, you have a lot of scriptures. I don't want you to hear me. I want you to hear God. So please prepare yourselves. Um, so get a piece of paper and a pencil and follow along as the Lord teaches us today. Our title today is What's in a Name? I want you to think about that. Think about your name. How important your name is to you or to your family. Whenever we think about a name, it has a reputation associated with it. It's just like when we go grocery shopping or shopping for any item, we always look at the name brands first. Why is that? Because it has a reputation. Normally when a name is out there, when it has a good reputation, you can find confidence in that name. So that's why I'm so excited because God says his name is to be praised. That means we can find confidence in God's word. So it's just like if somebody said, hey, they, you ever heard of Antoine Speller? Um, who, oh, yeah, I heard about him. He's this and he's that. What is your name saying about you? We're going to take a look today at what God's name is saying. As my son read Psalms 11, 111, verse 9 to 10, I wanted to just read those verses one more time, and let's see what it says. It says, He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Listen to this. Holy and reverend is his name. So, wow, God's name is holy and reverend. Now, before we dive in, what does name mean? What is the definition of name? And I want you to get this because you'll get the whole sermon if you understand this. The definition of name means reputation. It means fame. 
and it means glory. Wow. All of that is encompassed in a name. Now, Jesus Christ, when he was here, he gave us some information. He said there were some names that we should not call people. And you may be shocked to what these names are, but we see it being used in religious sect all around the world. And it's totally against what God has said. Here's the three things, and then I will talk about the fourth to wrap it up. Jesus said, call nobody master or rabbi. He said, call no one father. And then he says, call no one good. So let's take these and break it one at a time here. The first one, master, Matthew chapter 23, verse 8. Matthew chapter 23, verse 8. And it reads this way. It says, be, but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. Wow. Man, I tell you, he levels the field right there. He said, call no one rabbi or master because you are all brethren. So he levels the field and lets us know that no one is higher than the other person. It doesn't matter if you're preaching or you're leading um, a congregation. He says we are all brethren. They didn't go around calling people these titles. They only called these titles to the Pharisees and Sadducees. And we know what Jesus said about them. So the first thing we should call somebody is master or rabbi. The next thing is this one. You might be shocked on this one. Matthew 23, verse 9 is the verse right under it. Matthew 23, 9. It says, and call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father, which is in heaven. No, he's not talking about your biological father or someone that acts as a father to you. But he's talking about this as a greeting someone spiritually. And we see this in the Catholic church and other churches where they say, father, so-and-so, father, so-and-so. And it is so unscriptural because only we have one father. He should be greeted as such. Our father, which art in heaven. And then the next one. Oh, boy, this is good. Matthew chapter 19 verse 16 to 17. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 to 17. It says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master. That's a double whammy. Both of those are wrong. What good thing shall I do that I have eternal life? Now, I want you to think about this. He came with two um, salutations here. Good master. Jesus already told us we shouldn't call anyone master. Then he says, good master. And look at Jesus' response, how he answers. Verse 17, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou would enter into life, keep the commandments. So while wow, Jesus answers his question but he reprimands him first before he answers. He says, um, you know, don't call me good because one is good. So we shouldn't go around calling people good so-and-so, good so-and-so. Now, this is not talking about saying, hey, you play good. That's a good man there. That's general good. We're talking about using good as a, a, as a title or salutation. He said good master. You can tell that by the capitalization there, not when it's just the Lord's G and you're saying someone's good. So those are three things we should call people, master, father, and good. Now, I would like to take a look at this next one that we read in Psalms chapter 111, verse 9. And we're about to get into it. And he sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. So I want you to pay attention there that holy and reverend is whose name? His name, not our name. Our name is not holy and reverend. And this is the fourth thing that we shouldn't call people. It's reverend. 
I attend a lot of local assemblies and I go to the place and they're calling their pastor Reverend so-and-so. And that is so wrong because you don't understand that that man is not holy. That man is not reverend. Only that belongs to God. So as we take a look at it, let's take a look here. I want to first define what reverend means. We need to really define that first. If you look it up in the world's dictionary, Webster, it defines it uh, worthy of reverence. I don't think a man is worthy of reverence. And it says relating to clergy used as a title. Boy, that's a terrible definition. But if you look it up in the Strong's, which is a biblical definition, let's see what reverend means. Reverend means to fear, to revere, be afraid, to cause astonishment and awe, and to inspire reverence or godly fear. Wow. Now I want to ask you that question. Based on that definition, the root of reverend means fear. Now, should we apply that to a man? No. But what we often say, we've always done it that way. Well, this is what the Bible tells you in Romans chapter 12, that your mind has to be renewed because we have been doing some things that are wrong. Now, I want you to get ready because here are some scriptures to back this up because you, a lot of you might not even believe this because I've preached this before and people still going around calling people reverend. They haven't got it. I want you to look at Psalms 29, verse 2. Psalms 29, verse 2. And it reads this way. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Wow. We need to give the glory due unto his name, not another man's name. Whenever we use reverend as a title, we are taking the glory of God and giving it to a man because we just define what reverend means. It means fear. God tells us not to fear man. So why would we go around calling someone reverend? I like the way Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8 says it. Isaiah 42, verse 8. Boy, this is, I think this is the probably the, one of the best verses that will help you understand. Isaiah 42, 8 says this. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Wow. So remember, the definition of name means glory. When you say reverend, you are giving that name or that glory to a man. And I can tell you that is so disobedient to what God is saying. He says, I will not give it to another. He will not share his name with another. And the Bible is clear, holy and reverend is his name. And then if we look at John chapter 12, verse 28, John chapter 12, verse 28, this is when Jesus Christ was getting baptized and he comes out the water and listen to what the father says. It says, Father, glorify thy name. This is Jesus. Then came there a voice from heaven. Here's God saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. It's all in the name of Jesus. God glorified his name. But what did man do? Man took God's glory. And as the scripture says, gave it to graven images, beasts, man, and took the glory of God. Malachi chapter one, verse six. Boy, I tell you, it, it doesn't get any clearer than this. Malachi chapter one, verse six. It says, a son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? 
You keep saying you are a child of God, but you're not honoring him. He says, if I be your father, where's my honor? But listen to this. And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests that despise my name. And ye say, wherein have ye despised thy name? Wow. Well, they despised it by taking that title, that salutation of reverend unto themselves. I had an opportunity of um, speaking with a couple of pastors that use this title, and I would not use this title on them. And then one of the guys said, hey, you're going to show respect by using the title reverend. I say, I will show respect to God and give God his reverence. I will not reverence a man. I'm not going to fear a man. Well, I mean, because remember, reverence means fear. Don't you get it? Look at Matthew um, chapter 10, verse 28. Here we go. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. It says, and fear not them which kill the body. That's man. But are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able both to destroy the soul and body in hell. Wow. We are not to fear man. But un. But sad to say, we have taken the glory of God and given it to a man without even knowing it. We didn't even think about it because it was tradition. Stop following tradition. Get into your words. You know, the Lord has been teaching us a lot of things. You know, these last few weeks, we talked about not saying that we're going to church. People still saying that you can't go to church because the church is a body of Christ, but your mind's got to be renewed. We go to the house of God. We go to the house of prayer and we assemble with the saints. We don't assemble in the church. It's impossible. See, but that's tough for some people to understand because they don't study and know their word. And then we talked about pride, that God says pride is bad, but America and everybody saying pride is good. Get into God's word and you'll find out that you have been deceived. And right here, using this title as reverend, we are deceived by giving God's glory to a man without even thinking about it. We don't even think about it. I'm pleading to you today to give the glory due in his name. Now, I'm going to speed it up here quick because we're running out of time. Why should we not call people these names? Why? The Bible is clear. The Bible tells us, in Psalms 111, verse 9, holy and reverend is his name. So we need to give God's name the reverence and the holiness that it's due. And then I want you to write this down. The next reason we shouldn't call people these names is because Christ Jesus condemned the use of religious titles. I want you to write this down. We don't have time for sake of time. Read Matthew 23 verses 1 through 12. Matthew 23, verses 1 through 12. There is a, not a distinction of clergymen, clergymen and lay, laymen in the Bible. There's no distinction. He simply says, we are all brethren. Now, I'm like to lift verse 8 and 9 here. It says, but ye be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. He levels the field. There's no distinction. Just because you have a different function in the Bible, you're not above anyone just because you're delivering God's word or leading the church. Now, the next thing he says, Jesus also taught against any marks of division among his people. Mark chapter 12, verse 38 to 39. Wow, look, look at this. Mark chapter 12, verse 38 to 39. And he said unto them in his doctrine, boy, get this, beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplace and the chief seats in the synagogue and the upper rooms at feasts. When men take to themselves religious titles, special clothing, Jesus says, beware 
of them. I've seen them. I've seen them. You go to some places of worship. Oh man, it just they they they, they out like they're lifted high. They take you know, they sit in the position of being high, and then they want to be called these titles. But inwardly, they are taking the glory of God and not doing what God says. They want to be puffed up by man. And when we do this, we are feeding into their madness. We are actually doing them harm. We're already disobeying God, but we're doing them harm because we're puffing them up and they need to get to a place where God can save them. We cannot elevate these people above that they are. James chapter 2, when you get a chance, read these. James chapter 2, verse 1 and 9. Check that out. I'm going to lift verses 1 and 9 right quick. James chapter 2, I'm going to read 1 and 9. It says, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. But if ye have respect, verse 9, but if ye have respect of persons, ye commit sin or are convinced of the law as a transgressor. That means that you are putting others above another person. You can't have respect of person. We need to treat everyone the same. Stop showing people special because they got their doctrine. They got, they're called the pastor. The point is we are all brethren. Do not have respect of persons. And do not puff them up. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. And I think this actually uses the word puffed up. It says, in these things, brethren, there we go again. Boy, he loves to let us know where we are. I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sake, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. I tell you, titles simply separate. And, and Jesus Christ, if you read those scriptures I gave you, he has no, that has no place in the body of Christ titles, no place. You go, you visit some places of worship, they got so many titles and positions. I mean, no wonder the church ain't doing anything. They're, 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 they're hunkered down by bureaucracy, red tape. There was only two positions that God gave in a church. That was um, the pastor and the deacon. But boy, we sliced that thing down to the minute and ain't doing what God says. I'm telling you, we need to give the glory God that do his name. And we're about to wrap up here. I'm running out of time here. What you've learned today, I pray that you go back and study God's word. God has spoke to us and has given us some truth. James chapter four, verse 17 says this, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. So the question is, you have been given the word of God today now you are responsible for it. That's what I tell people. Once you hear God's word, boy, I'm telling you, it's tough because you're responsible for it. Now you have to give a response. But I want you to just think about Jesus' name. There's something about the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, the Bible tells us every knee shall bow. The Bible tells us it's a name that's above all names. And then it, at the name of Jesus, the lame walk, the dumb talk, and demons are cast out. All at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, we are given eternal life. Believe, believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life. And I like Acts chapter 4 verse 12. It says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And I love this one. Boy, in a time like this, Matthew chapter 18, verse 20 says, for where two or three are gathered together, what? In my name, 
there am I in the midst of them. So I'm so excited today that as my family is gathered here, and as you are out there watching, we God, Jesus is in the midst because we are gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'll end with this last verse, Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. What's in a name? There's something about the name of Jesus. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So think about this. Whenever we take God's name, we are called Christians. Are you taking God's name in vain? You could be breaking one of the Ten Commandments. What does that mean? What are you saying there? Vain means it's useless. It doesn't mean anything to you. If you claim to be a Christian, but you're out there acting like the world, you are taking God's name in vain. It means nothing to you. That means you have took the glory of God and given it unto man. So I plead for you today, for those that are claiming to be Christians or those that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior, the time for decision is now. You have to know that, hey, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins, but I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. And most importantly, on the third day, he rose from the grave. You can say that, you can believe it, but until you actually accept him into your heart and you see the change in your life, you are not saved. We've been preaching that. I hope you go back and look at some of those messages. But if you would like to receive Christ right now as your personal savior, bow your heads and just repeat this prayer. Remember, you have to mean it in your heart and Christ will save you. Say, dear God, I come now confessing I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and on the third day rose from the grave with all power. I accept him into my heart by faith. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you. If you've done that, please visit minutesoftruth.org and drop us a line at contact, and we'll love to send you some more information. Be blessed.